The Adversary Chapter 3 1 Peter 5 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In Genesis we find Satan in the form of a serpent. He grew in stature and became more subtle. His lies became more intense. And in Revelation 12, he is called that old serpent, the great red dragon. The Battle of the Ages God formed a body from dust, blew his breath into it, and Adam became a living soul within a body. To have a body is the only way that anyone can operate on the earth. Adam was to rule and have dominion over all God's creation. However, when he opened his eyes in paradise, Satan was already there, waiting to deceive him. From the start, it is clear that this fallen being from the previous age is now challenging God's authority on earth. But he lacked a body. Satan had to use the body of an animal, the snake, to do his dirty work of deception, which originates from a spirit of rebellion. As usual, one thing led to another, and everybody wants to blame someone else. Instead of ruling, Adam listened to his wife and then blamed her, who in turn listened to Satan. In their disobedience to God, they lost the light life, and it ignited the battle of the ages between the two seeds, good and evil. Enmity was set between Satan's seed and the woman's seed. Two seeds, two bodies. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now we all know a woman does not carry seed. And we know that Mary knew no man, but she was overshadowed by the Spirit. God himself took on this war on behalf of all creation. Right from the word go, Satan worked hard at infiltrating and perverting the seed line of God. Over and over he tried to kill and destroy the seed or damage the seed line. He entered the first human seed and Cain opened the door to sin and killed his brother. But, Genesis 4.25, Adam knew his wife again and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Satan then tried to infiltrate the seed line of the sons of God in Seth. The sons of God from the seed line of Seth married the daughters of man from the seed line of Cain, and sin spread like wildfire, and giants were produced. Please note, angels were never called sons. Hebrews 1, 5 For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee, and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Sin became so rampant, and the whole world became evil. Only Noah was found righteous in his generation. At that point, God regretted making man, and the first world was totally destroyed by water. No one ever became older than a thousand years within the first spiritual day, in spite of the fact that man was not supposed to die at all. Man was actually created to live forever, but now they all died within a thousand years. Not only did they die, the first world was totally destroyed. Peter reminded us that one day is as a thousand years for God, 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The end spells a new beginning with God. There was a new beginning with Noah. Unfortunately, sin entered into man, and now it came through the flood. And just like rodents that come on ships destroy the nature of a beautiful island, sin manifested right after the flood and filled the earth once more. Men became so arrogant to the point that they attempted to be God and built a city that would reach heaven. Once again, God intervened and stopped man from destroying himself. God confused their languages, and men scattered over the world in different directions. 
all building their own little kingdoms. God loves his creation, and he called a man and revealed his redemption plan to him. Abraham passed the test and believed God. He moved away from everything that seemed right in the natural, and he left the earthly kingdom where he lived and went looking for a city that had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. The covenant with Abraham was established in two seed lines, in the generations and in the promise of one seed, in Christ. Genesis 17:7. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The seed line covenant unfolded 430 years later through Moses, through the seed in their natural generations. Satan went to the utmost in destroying the seed line of redemption, but he could not touch the spiritual seed. He worked through Pharaoh, who massacred a whole generation of baby boys. Ironically, Moses, the target and reason for this massacre, grew up and was schooled by Pharaoh himself. This is proof that Satan is not as clever as people want us to believe. It is actually pathetic, and it was a foreshadowing of what was to happen with the baby Jesus and then the church. The chosen people broke every command of life before Moses was able to impart God's plan to them. Satan then totally infiltrated the pattern that God gave Moses, and they became serpent seed. The generational seed of Abraham were now totally corrupt, and God himself came to redeem mankind through the promised seed. We are not from a generational seed line that failed but we are directly under the promise that was given Abraham, and all we have to do is believe. It was a built-in guarantee from the beginning in order to secure the seed. Satan used the wicked King Herod to try to get rid of the Christ, and once again he just could not get the right baby. Satan is no match for God and never will be. He could not stop God's plan. Galatians 4, 4-5 but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. God now had to redeem not only the Gentiles, but also them that were stuck in the system taken over by Satan himself. God himself stepped in to redeem creation. Satan's plans did not work and will never work. Now he is defeated, disarmed, and his head is smashed. He is not too bright, and God is not going to let him have the last say. Galatians 3.16 Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. The Three Frog Spirits Satan cannot create, and there is nothing original in him. He can only copy. He got himself two friends and formed his own satanic trinity. Revelation 16, 13 And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. The Jews became the false prophet, who also formed an alliance with Rome resembled the beast and is symbolized by iron. Together they worked up their own army against the Messiah. All this was empowered by Satan, the dragon. They were doomed from the start, as they are no match for God. Psalm 2, 1-4 Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. They all had one mind and one purpose. Revelation seventeen thirteen and 14. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. 
and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The only reason why the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are mentioned in the book of Revelation is because they were defeated by the lamb at Armageddon, the cross. They are definitely not symbols with which to scare Christians. Armageddon means a high place where strength is measured. Jesus came as a lamb to the slaughter, but when he gave up the ghost, then the lion roared and Satan was stripped of his power. The only thing he can do now is to deceive people, but his destiny is now set for sure. Revelation 20, 10 And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. One, the beast. There are so many explanations about the beast doing the rounds, but scripture must explain scripture. It cannot be a king and the next moment be a big computer. We have to go back to the book of Daniel in order to explain the beast. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a statue that consisted of gold, silver, bronze and iron, and it resembled four empires that followed in succession coming from the people, the kingdoms of the earth. The number four means earthly. These empires were the gold, Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar, silver, Medo-Persia and King Cyrus, bronze, Greece and Alexander the Great, iron, Rome, the Julio-Claudian dynasty. A rock was cut loose without man's hands and struck the statue on the feet of iron and clay and then became a high mountain that filled all the earth. The mountain is none other than Christ, the rock the builders rejected. A body is controlled by the head and the three empires that followed all got their inspiration from Babylon, which in turn was controlled by the same spirit that was working behind the Tower of Babel. Satan was establishing his seed in preparation for the final battle. In chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar reveals the spirit that was working behind the statue when he made an entire statue of gold and made people bow before it. This statue resembled the image of the beast, which are the systems that control the worldly empires, the spirit of Antichrist. It is still working in the world. In chapter 7, Daniel dreamed about four beasts that came out of the sea in succession. They represented the same empires as was revealed by the statue in King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Gold, the Babylonian empire under Nebuchadnezzar, was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Silver, the Medo-Persian empire, was like a bear. It raised up itself on one side or one dominion, and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. Bronze, the Grecian empire of Alexander the Great, was like a leopard, which had four wings of a bird on its back and four heads. Iron, the Roman empire, terrible, powerful, and dreadful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured, crushed, and trampled what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that came before it, and it had ten horns, symbolizing ten kings. These dreams run in parallel. They are progressive in Revelation and cannot be interpreted by only reading one portion of the word. We find this same story in the book of Revelation 13, the only difference being the four beasts are combined as one beast. In Daniel 2, four kingdoms form one body, and Babylon is the head. They all have the same purpose. Revelation 13, 1 and 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The four empires operated through the same spirit and were empowered by the dragon. The emblem of Babylon was a lion, and in the book of Revelation 13, 
the beast's mouth was like a lion. Note, the dragon and the beast each had ten horns, and the dragon had seven heads. They all operated under and through the authority and rulers. They are of the same kind and the same spirit with one mind to take out the Christ. The Ten Horns The last empire that Daniel saw in chapter 7 was Rome. It had ten horns representing ten kings, of which three kings gave way to one that had a mouth speaking great things. Daniel 7, 7 and 8 After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, the Roman Empire, terrible, powerful and dreadful and exceedingly strong, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and crushed and trampled what was left with its feet, and it was different from the beasts that came before it, and it had ten horns, symbolizing ten kings. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. The first Roman emperors in the Julio-Claudian dynasty. First was Julius Caesar, 27 BC. Then Augustus Caesar, 27 BC to 14 AD. Then Tiberius Caesar, 14 AD to 37 AD. Caligula Caesar, 37 AD to 41 AD. Claudius Caesar, 41 AD to 54 AD. And Nero Caesar, 54 AD to 68 AD. The next three were Caesars in one year. Galba Caesar, 68 AD to 69 AD. Otto Caesar, 69 AD and Vitellius Caesar, 69 AD. Then came Vespasian Caesar, 69 AD to 79 AD. The same ten horns are described in connection with the beast in Revelation 13 and 17. Flavian dynasty was started when Vespasian received a prophecy that he would be Caesar. He turned from taking over Judea and went back to Rome and being a man of war, he easily conquered the throne. Revelation 17, 12-17 And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. The ten horns now turned on the whore that was riding the beast, and destroyed her with fire. Rome destroyed the city and the temple, the seat of the false prophet, the whore. 2. The false prophet, the harlot. Moses was given the instructions and foreshadowing pattern of the heavenly realm which was to be opened on the earth. A nation was prepared as a body, a system, to harness sin and death. The law system was only showing the way to Christ, who would redeem the sin of the world. As a chosen nation, Israel carried the testimonies of Christ with them in the ark wherever they went for over 1,500 years. Christ was with them all the time. They were the custodians of salvation. 1 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 They all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. 
This nation was symbolized by a woman that was to bring forth the man-child, the Savior. Galatians 4, 4 But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son made of a woman, made under the law. Mary was a woman, and the law was a woman. Revelation 12, 1 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Joseph had a dream about the sun, moon, and stars, a picture of Israel, God's chosen people. The sun and the moon and the stars came and bowed before the one with the multicolored coat, a picture of Jesus fulfilling all the law and the prophets. Salvation to all nations was God's plan from the beginning. This system, the heavenly elements, was totally infiltrated by Satan, to the point that the Jews returning from Babylon worshipped the system and took it in their own control. Instead of receiving their Messiah, they crucified him and called for his blood to come on them. They became the fig tree within the vine. Matthew 23, 2 The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Unwilling to change, this chosen nation adulterated themselves bankrupt with the idols of nations around them. They killed the prophets that God sent to warn them until they became captives in the very land that symbolized the spirit of the Antichrist, the head of the image of the beast, Babylon. This marks the starting point of the destruction of Jerusalem and its temple. Isaiah 43.14 Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon. In Babylon, instead of repenting, they took their rebellion to a higher level. There they created their own system of worship and instituted Pharisees, Sadducees, and synagogues which all became an abomination in God's eyes. Jesus called them serpent seed and vipers. He knew what their angle was. The ark disappeared when they were taken to Babylon. On returning from exile, they rebuilt their temple without the ark and the holy of holies. The ark that represented God's presence disappeared, and now they just kept empty rituals without God. They killed God's prophets, and now they allied with Rome to kill God's Son. No wonder Isaiah cries out in Isaiah 1.21. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. The book of Revelation chapter 17 describes this harlot riding on the scarlet-colored beast having seven heads and ten horns. She was full of the names of blasphemy, and on her forehead was written, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots. She became what she worshipped. Revelation 17, 1-6 And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The very woman, the nation, that was to bring forth the Christ, turned to harlotry and was made drunk with the blood of the prophets, and rode the beast. Revelation seventeen eighteen, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The very system that was to bring forth the Christ now became the false prophet, 
turning against the Christ, riding the beast. The Jews allied with Rome to do their dirty work, but Satan could not stop God's seed filling the earth, not even by infiltrating the very woman that was to bring forth the man-child. God had them in derision. They were no match for God, and their ultimate fate is the lake of fire. Revelation 20.10 And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, for ever and ever. The Seven Heads The rulers of the temple made an alliance with the rulers of the world in order to accomplish their wicked plans. All this was prophesied, and yet they blindly stumbled ahead to their own destruction. David's prophecy, a thousand years before, describes this battle, the alliances made, as well as the outcome. Psalm 2, 1-12 Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath set unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Peter clearly revealed the rulers of Psalm 2 when he explained to them the healing of the lame man. Acts 3, 12-18 And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. The ten horns, the rulers of Rome, together with the seven heads, an alliance of Rome and Israel, are also mentioned in connection with the dragon and the beast on which the woman sat. Revelation 12.3 And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Heads are rulers, or people in high authority. The Roman rulers joined the Jewish rulers against the Messiah, forming these seven heads. The book of Revelation chapter 17 symbolically refers to them as mountains. Revelation 17, 9 And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads, or seven mountains, on which the woman sitteth. In Daniel chapter 9, 
Seventy weeks were determined on Daniel's people and city, which would lead to the revealing of the Messiah. Tiberius was the third Caesar in Rome, and in his fifteenth year of reigning, John came baptizing people unto repentance, preparing the way for the Christ. This was a very important time in history. The stage was set for the greatest event ever on the face of planet Earth. Jesus was baptized by John, and it marked the beginning of his ministry, as well as the beginning of the last week of the 70-week prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. The rulers of the world, the seven heads of the dragon, were also in place. All this is found in the Word. Scripture must explain Scripture. The only history that can explain Scripture is the history that took place during the writing of that certain text. The whole of the New Testament was written during the time of Roman rule. Modern history cannot be used to explain things that happened during the Roman rule. Bible history can be used for spiritual applications, but it cannot change the historical facts. The Word is given by the Spirit, and the Spirit will never lead you where the Word cannot sustain it. The Word is forever settled in the heavens. We have no right to change or impose our natural interpretation of the Word on others. It is your duty as a Christian to take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 1 Timothy 4 verse 16 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divining the word of truth. Satan and his team had one common purpose, and that was to stop the seed. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 and 8 But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Luke chapter 3 is an amazing chapter. It covers the year 27 AD, the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. This chapter reveals the seven heads described in Revelation and fits the timing of the 70-week prophecy of Daniel 9. Seventy weeks of years were determined upon the people and the city unto their Messiah. This period is broken up into seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. That gives us sixty-nine weeks or four hundred and eighty-three years. The countdown started when the command to rebuild Jerusalem went forth. This command went forth in the year 457 BC with Artaxerxes. Making the calculations, we come to 27 AD, 483 less 457 BC brings us to 26 AD. We have to add one year for the turn of the century. That brings us to 27 AD, the year Jesus was baptized, to fulfill all righteousness. The stage was set, and Jesus was inaugurated from heaven. This all comes together in Luke 3. Luke 3 verse 1. In the fifteenth year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and thirdly, Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was the tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and fifthly, Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas, and seventhly, Caiaphas. Here the seven heads are revealed, and players are in place for the battle of the ages. The word of God concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness, the desert. Luke 3 verse 3. And he went into all the country around about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. The first ones that came to be baptized by John were the carriers of serpent seed. Luke 3, 7. 
Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 3. The Dragon There is no doubt as to who the dragon is. The serpent of the book of Genesis has grown in stature and is now called the old serpent, the dragon. He is described as having ten horns and seven heads, Revelation 12.3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. There is very little revealed in the word of the origin of Satan. Peter tells us about angels that sinned. This event is not at all recorded in the Bible, and it is generally assumed that this rebellion of the angels took place before the age of the existence of the human race. 2 Peter 2, 4 God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 1, 6 And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. We do, however, know more about his working. Satan first deceives people and then accuses them, but he lost the seat or place of accusation and was totally stripped of power, since Jesus took all sin upon himself and overcame evil with good through his death. 1 John 3, 8 for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The kingdom of God which is from heaven was now brought to earth in and by Christ. Satan had his last attempt to ultimately destroy the seed, the infant church. This is when persecution and tribulation broke loose like never before. Daniel had visions of these times and God commanded him to seal them. These seals were broken when the Lamb was slain, and the wrath poured out on that generation that called for his blood on them and their children. It has nothing to do with the time we live in, or the end of the earth. It was the end of that world, that generation that rejected the Christ. Daniel 10.1 in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was called Belteshazzar. And the word was true, and it referred to great tribulation, conflict, and wretchedness. And he understood the word, and had understanding of the vision. This was the third massacre in the seed line of salvation. Firstly, the babies in Moses' time. Secondly, the babies in the time of Christ. Thirdly, the tribulation on the infant church. Satan was bound a thousand years. The word millennium is not in the Bible. Thousand years means perfect time. The only perfect time on earth was when Satan was not able to kill. Jesus took the temptation for every man, and Satan left for a more opportune season. Satan were bound a thousand years, a perfect time. Satan could not kill the Christ. Satan was loosed out of the pit when Christ gave himself over to taste death for every man by his own choice. Satan knew his time was short and the angels cried woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and Satan did all he could to prevent the church being born. The harlot system now rides the beast, empowered and inspired by the dragon, Satan, the serpent, to destroy the church. Revelation 19 reveals this war in the heavens. The rider on a white horse is the most beautiful picture of the victory that Christ brought for the church, to the church, and with the church. Revelation 19, 11-19 And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. 
and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. Instead of the destruction of the infant church, life burst forth, and the gospel spread to every corner of the known world. Satan himself became the instrument of total destruction by taking out that old system of worship in order for the new to be established. Psalm 2 verse 4 He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. The Rod of Iron Rome was represented by iron from Daniel's interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Satan was preparing himself for battle, and he empowered the beast with the ten horns, Rome. Israel allied with Rome to take out the Messiah, but just like Haman who hanged on his own gallows, Rome turned on Israel. Rome became the rod of iron in God's hand, ruling the nations, and took out and destroyed the harlot, the false prophet that was riding the beast. Revelation 17.16 And the ten horns, kings, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. God ruled them with a rod of iron. Revelation 2.7 And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter they shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Psalm 2.9 Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Satan stirred Judaism to use Rome to take out the Christ. God used Rome to remove Judaism, that old system of worship that became an abomination, and dealt with Satan at the same time. God overcame evil and has not given us a spirit of fear. Satan is the loser and does not have the last say. The book of Revelation is not about Satan and his friends, but about Jesus Christ who is the rider on the white horse, the ultimate victorious one. The War In Revelation 12, we find two wonders in heaven. One, a child being born, Revelation 12, 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. 2. A dragon that wants to destroy the child. Revelation 12, 3 and 4. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. 
And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Satan was cast out of heaven by Michael. The accuser lost his seat of accusation in heaven, and he was cast down to the earth. Revelation 12, 7-10 And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. This was also revealed to Daniel by the angel Gabriel. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a creation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. The Word explains the Word, and you cannot read Revelation without the rest of the Word. The Temptation Satan knew he had a little time, and he went full out, trying to destroy the seed. Jesus fulfilled all righteousness at his baptism, and was deliberately led into the desert by the Spirit. There. In the heat of the desert, he was tempted of Satan on his sonship and passed the tests that Adam failed in the cool of the garden. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. 1 John 2, 16 For all that is in the world, 1, the lust of the flesh, and 2, the lust of the eyes, and 3, the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. 1 John 2.17 And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. This time Satan's deception did not work, and he left for a more opportune time, which happened to be the cross. There, however, he met his fate once and for all. The Final Victory 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus totally stripped Satan of his power at the cross. Colossians 2, 13-15. And you, being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Paul makes it quite clear that everything we have is because of the cross. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus got the complete victory on the cross, which is now passed on to everyone that would believe and to be...